Hey, this is Taylor with Major Outdoors, and we're gonna go over like my basic jig setups. Like this is only for like my skipping grass jigs for the most part. So first we're gonna start with jigs that I generally am using. So right here, I don't scrape everything. This is the one I have tied on right now on my rod. It is a Rapala All Pro jig right there. It does come with a rattle on the back. This one is broken off as the moment. Um, and it comes with a pretty stiff weed guard and a big beefy hook, which I like. And then I got an ozone trailer. So we'll go over the jigs I'm generally using. And I have three jigs right now rigged up with my favorite plastics. And we're going to do plastics too. So here we go. This is the all terrain jig right here. I think this is perch color, if I believe, 3 eighths ounce. And then right here, I have a zoom craw on there, speed craw, I believe. Um, this is the junior style. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I really like these ribs on the sides. I think that creates a lot of water vibration. So this is like one of my basic setups, especially if I'm skipping wood and stuff. Then the jig, uh, the size I normally use is probably three eighths to half ounces. Normally all my jigs for skipping and punching grass uh, and flipping docks and stuff. So here I have like a black and blue Rapala jig and this one does have the rattle on the back right here. And then I have a Strike King Rage Craw, which I really like. I use that a lot. That one creates a lot of um, lift from the trailer, so it drops a little bit slower in the water column. So the more, you know, the more it kicks up, the less it's it's gonna fall slower in the water column. So if you're at a half ounce, you might get away, and it might be between like a three eighths and a half. So then I also got a half ounce with the full size Ozone trailer. So I'm gonna go over my plastics that I'm generally using. I got a whole bunch of flags. And we're gonna start with the Z-Craw. So the Super Z-Craw, there's two sizes. This is your four and a half, I believe. And then you have your Z-Craw Junior, which is three and a half, I believe. Um, I really like the three and a half better for trailer usages. I just think it's more compatible. It looks better, I think. The four inch, I really like the Texas rig too, so that's a good all around bait. Um, so if I pull one out, this is like a watermelon color that I've been using. Very, you know, lots of red, nice and translucent green with a little bit of black flake. These tails kick pretty good and you can impart a lot of action on these. And then here's a blueberry kind, which is like a black with blue flake. And you know, this one just works all year long, anywhere you go. So, and you can obviously see all these ribs disperse a lot of water. And I really like these. And they're fairly inexpensive, which is kind of a nice touch as well. We'll talk about the expensive ones. Because every, I think everyone's on these. I think these are the best trailers that have ever been made. This is a like black and blue color, bug, blue bug. Um, kind of like a blue sapphire with the black. And this is a rage. Strike King Rage, and then I got a Green Pumpkin. So these are the, probably the ones I'm using most of the year. Um, what I, like I said earlier is, if you put those on a jig, you know, certain jigs, you know, if you go heavier, and with these kicking so much, they're slowing the jig down on the wave fall. So that's, you know, obviously something you gotta take part of. And then my new favorite that I've been buying, because I think they work really, really well, and I think a lot of people aren't, using them yet. I think it's starting to become very trendy to use them and I think a lot of people are starting to get on it, but it's actually the Ozone Muscle Back Finesse Craw. In the water, these craws just sit up just so nicely because the craws do float. So here is the 3.25 and this is my general trailer one. So this is green with a little bit of red flake, you know, very basic looking, right? And this thing just fits on so well on all jigs because it is that kind of like cylinder shape. And the thing I really like about this one is like, I haven't had a problem with a lot of like the keepers, like the keeper systems, like this one works on lead, wires, everything, because it is so wide here. And I think it just, it just sits up so perfectly in the water column when it's in the water, which I really like. And then same thing, they do have a bigger one because that is the junior size. This one's a little bit bigger. And this is their blue craw, I believe, or the 309 or the bluegill color. And I just like this color because it's a little bit different. I have it on one of the, my jigs, which is right here. It's kind of like this pumpkin seed green 
flake, red flake, black flake with a little bit of light blue, baby blue strands. And for this Rapala jig with a 309 ozone trailer, it just fits so perfectly and I love that. So, you know, tell me what you think about it, but this is a color I've been throwing a lot. I just don't see it used as much and I feel like it's a bluegill imitator enough. So here's the trailer closer, you know, kind of a bronzy green, mostly bronze, brown, with purple, gold flake, black flake. And then on the bottom, it's kind of like this baby blue color, which I really like. This is the bigger size, so I did trim these two trailers down, the Strike King and the Ozone on the half ounce Rapala jig. I did not trim the... Uh, the all-terrain jig at 3 8 I think this just fits really well. It's very slim and slender, uh, really good around pitching little docks, you know, when you're trying to get really tight and it's some cover. And I like this. One big thing about this trailer that I haven't mentioned is the flatter the back is, the easier it is to skip, right? And now obviously the more surface of the head of the jig, it's easier to skip across the water. Where like these jigs have a little more of a diagonal look and a slimmer profile body is easier to get through some grass. So, you know, that's something you got to choose and pick. So we're going to talk about my most used jig setup and you don't have to go this deep or anything. They have a lot more other options, obviously. Any, what I would recommend is if you're throwing three eighth jigs, which is the primary jig to throw all year long, like you will probably always have one tied on. Medium heavy, fast action tip. That's all you need really. You can go from anywhere from rods that are $50 to they have rods that I'm sure that are 800,000 plus. But this is kind of like the sweet spot I'm running because you have this thing in your hand for eight hours a day. If you're throwing a lot of jigs, and this is some one of my techniques I wanted to get better at as a angler is like something I came into bass fishing I wasn't the best at and I wasn't used to doing. You know, I was used to drop shotting, um, swim baits, you know, more finesse style. So this is a power fishing tactic but I've been trying to get really good at it the last couple of years because like you can catch fish all year long on it so this is a half ounce jig with the no zone 3.25 trailer it just fits so perfectly I think um, and then we're gonna talk my rod is a 853 G Loomis medium heavy extra fast tip I really like this rod um, not for cork not full cork which I like exposed rod blank on the back which I really like for sensitivity it's got a really limber tip right so it bends really tight and then it's got more of a parabolic action into the blank which I really like so when you start getting those fish pegged um, and then I got it paired up with a uh, Shimano Corrado DC with the digital chip at 7 4 to 1 I believe um, I like Jig reels from anywhere in the sevens to all the way up to like an eight to one one, especially if you're flipping really heavy grass and you need to reel up really quick. Um, I think seven, like a seven one to one, seven two to one, seven four to one, anything in that ratio, I think is just like perfect for picking up slack. Let's say the fish hits it behind and swims with it to the outside. You can catch up to them or if they hit it on a drop, you can catch up, but it's also slow enough to make sure that you you know, take your time, make your pitches, make sure you hit the bottom, move it a couple times and good to go. We'll talk about my line and my setup. Uh, on the DC, I have a braid. I have a 30 pound Power Pro braid to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. I use the Alberto knot or Albert knot. I don't really know exactly what it's called. Um, I really like it. I don't even know if you can see that. Um, because it is so slim, it goes through the guides really well, especially in these jig rods that when you go more expensive with the jig rods, towards the end of the tip, the guides get really small. So that's one reason I really like this knot. I have used the double uni and the other knots, but I think the W uni is bigger, so it doesn't come through as well. Um, so with that being said, these are my three favorite plastics I've been using, my three or my two favorite jigs that I've generally been using this whole year. And then also with that, this is my my best setup. This is a seven foot one, medium heavy, extra fast tip, braid to fluorocarbon. The other thing I would recommend is just go 20 pound straight fluorocarbon. I think that's a really great way to go as well. In the comments below, go comment what your favorite jig 
setup is and what are your favorite jigs and trailers. I'd love to hear them. And then go like and subscribe my YouTube channel. And I have other social media platforms at Major Outdoors on Instagram and Facebook as well. Hope to see you guys on the water soon. Hopefully you're whacking them because we have frozen water right now. And ice fishing, going through the same hole every day is just a little long and cold.